Okay, here's a little video um, looking at shells, how to create shells. Um, there's various reasons why you may want uh, to do this. A common one that we maybe play around with is, is the idea of a bottle. So if we've created a bottle through um, a loft or a revolve of some kind, um, we obviously want to have a, uh, a thin wall on that to make it realistic. Uh, if we revolve it, you could um, create a profile that's, that is got an inside and an outside, so that you could do it that way, be quite fiddly. Um, but often what we do instead is we, we use this, the, the shell command. So the shell is this one up here, this kind of um, har, sort of two sides missing off of a cube. And all we do simply is choose the face we're going to remove. So for this bottle, we would choose that top bit. Um, and it's going to create a shape, uh, it's going to create a hollow, hollow part. It's going to remove everything um, inside this part um, from that face there. We can change the thickness, um, uh, make it thinner. One thing to watch when you're doing this is certain features it may struggle with. So Onshape seems to deal with it better than, say, Inventor. Inventor would, would struggle because it would be trying to shell this part. Now, that part is two millimeters thick. So you can't shell it with a wall thickness of one because there's, there's no room for the hole, the hollow. So in Inventor, if you were going to make, make uh, that part and if you're going to shell it, you would need to shell it and then add this part later. So the order in which you create features um, is important. So if I just remove that shell, for example, and I was to go down to this fillet feature, if I just delete that fillet for a moment. If I shell this, uh, again, and I'm putting a wall thickness, sorry, I've hit the wrong button. If I shell it um, and I put in a wall thickness of one, let's say, that's great. I've got that. That's all nice and hollow. And then I look at the bottom and I think, oh, hang on, um, that's too sharp. I need to fillet that. If I put that fillet on now, it's not going to do it. Why? Well, if I was to cut all that out of the bottle, look, that material, um, I would end up with a big hole because we've removed the insides. If I turn on a little section view, which is quite a handy feature of uh, on shape, there we go, we can see that's what it looks like when it's cut in half. Okay. If I get my fillet tool and I stick it on there, look, that fillet is going to be cutting into this empty space. So I couldn't do a five. I could maybe do a 0 0.5. That would probably just about do it. Um, maybe I couldn't even do that. Oh, yeah, right, like a tiny, tiny fillet on there. So you need to think about um, the order in which you do uh, your your uh, features. So if I want that fillet, I'm going to need to go and do it before I shell it, um, which either means I need to delete the shell or I can actually use, move the roll bar bell up here, the roll back bar up. So that kind of goes in history. It's like a time traveling bar that I've no longer got the shell. I haven't done that yet. I can now put that fillet on there and it's going to do that fine because that is um, not hollow yet. Then if I go back and travel forward in time again and put my shell back in place, it's going to do it. So the order in which you do that is quite important. If I just go up here, you'll see on shapes dealt with this bit quite nicely. It's um, it's, it's created that, that little, um, little ledge. You could obviously have modeled it differently. We could have shelled it at that point and then created a little hollow top hat type shape. Um, but, uh, there's lots of ways of, of doing it. But the important thing to remember is the order in which you do it. If I go to maybe a different shape here, um, it's just a brick. Uh, we can look at it again. So that the shell on the um, uh, bottle, obviously, you just want one surface shell to make it a hollow shape. But we can have more than one. So if I wanted to make it hollow, so like a, like a tube, I can select that end as well. And we can see through it. So that's now we've got, got two open ends. And in fact, the bottom as well. So I may find that obviously I could have extruded that as a, as a like a U shape, um, but it may have been easier for me to just do a block and then shell those two bits. Again, if I'm going to put a fillet on there, or I would say a chamfer, I'm going to chamfer that, um, I'm going to struggle. Again, I could might want to put a little chamfer, it's going to be a weak corner. Um, like that, so I would need to think. Oh, well, actually, let's put it above the above the shell, and now it's going to shell that chamfer as well. So try and say that quickly. Okay, shell the chamfer, or again, a fillet on there. It's going to just about do, but it's a bit. Mm, so I'd need to maybe put that above the shell. So the order in which you put it is important, um, but you can move things around if you need to. Uh, you can show more than one. Um, 
uh, face of an object to create a, a, either a hollow or um, a more open shape like that. So that is shells. Um, commonly we use it for bottle-y type things, um, but any other shape that's got, uh, are going to have a thin wall um, may be easier to make it in that way.